In the last five days, renewed terrorist attacks have emerged in the rural communities of Zanfara and Sokoto states. It has been suggested that the attacks are aimed at forcing the new governors in the states into negotiating with the assailants. And the most affected regions are the northwest and Niger state in central Nigeria. The attacks have risen intensively. Previously, some former state governors of the region entered into peace accords with the terrorist gangs operating in the state. However, the deals quickly fell through with the gangs returning to kidnapping travelers and villagers and carrying out widespread killings in the area. How will the new governors in the affected regions cope with a daunting task ahead of them? What do they need to do to put an end to the issues? Well, let's get a sense of what the focus of the governors should be with regards to security in their states. I have with me security analyst and CEO of Beacon Consulting, Dr. Kabir Adamu. Kabir Adamu, good to see you and thanks for your time. Specifically, Beacon Consulting have been working and, uh, you know, from time to time we get the security report and briefs. Now, first of all, let's talk about the resurgence. Uh, there was a law during uh, the campaigns and even the elections to the extent that even in Nigeria's uh, South East that we thought that they had the stay at home and a few other things that will hinder the, uh, the polls. Uh, we saw some kind of peaceful uh, politicking and transition. What's going on? Um, I, I wish I could answer that question you know, clearly, but I'll tell you what um, the data has been, has been saying. And you're right, the data indicated that um, January uh, there was a spike, February we saw a reduction, mm -hmm. In March, immediately after the elections, in fact, in the last one month of the elections, mm. uh, we saw an increase. And the same thing kind of maintained through April. Mm. And then now into May, we're seeing that a, a plateau, as it were. Uh, so, so far, the highest um, period for which we've seen occurrences has been the month of March, after, after the election. Specifically, if you pick the last um, week of the month of March and the first week of April, recorded the highest um, security incidents in this year so far. Mm -hmm. And specifically, these have been occurring in Plateau State. Yeah. Uh, sadly, in the month of um, May, had the highest fatality figure for, for, that, for that period. Um, Niger State, we saw the same thing, Zamfara State, uh, and then of course um, parts of um, Kasina State. Uh, then of course um, Kaduna, specifically in Brindungwari, and then South, Southern Kaduna. So, um, Despite all the investment in security in Nigeria, and frankly, a lot of investment has, has gone into security, uh, insecurity remains a huge challenge um, in the country. But uh, I mean, there are some very interesting developments that we've monitored to, um, during the transition um, period. Mm -hmm. uh, the Governor's Forum held a retreat, and security was the primary focus of that retreat. They discussed, um, quote unquote, a new approach to security, they talked about peace uh, building, they talked about early warning systems, they talked about infusing that with early warning systems with our federal response um, arrangements. So I was quite excited about that. Um, and then quite interestingly, the National Assembly too, during the induction um, it had, I think in, in, in the Trans Transcorp <coughs> Hotel, also talked about security. Um, in other words, uh, implementing the paradigm shift that the Buhari administration promised it was going to implement in the revised uh, national security strategy where we were told that there will be a shift from the state-centric approach to security to the human approach to security. Yeah. So I was very happy that in that induction exercise, they talked about the drivers of insecurity, things like climate change and inability to adapt, um, things like the socioeconomic challenges, uh, poverty, weapon pro proliferation, our porous borders, name them. Now, point I'm trying to make is that uh, it appears that um, this government that is coming in, and by government I mean the executive arm and to an extent the legislative arm and the subnationals are uh, beginning to see security from a different paradigm. Um, the former uh, concentration, as it were, on hard power were seen in, in real terms now and not the political jargon we had when they spoke about um, uh, the non-kinetic approach to security. Now in real terms, we're seeing moves 
by both the National Assembly uh, through the induction that, that it happened, the mm -hmm. Governor's Forum, and then of course the new, the new president, uh, he's also spoken along that yeah. line. So what, what we're hoping to see as the new government takes shape, uh, of course he just spoke with politicians and I had the back and forth <laughs> regarding the leadership of the 10th Assembly, that too would be crucial. Who becomes the leader, who the, the National Assembly appoints as the chairman of the several committees, um, and then of course at the subnational level. Um, we started this conversation, you asked, uh, you highlighted concerns around the Northwest. Yeah. Northwest region is probably the only region in Nigeria where the governors don't have a uh, unified approach to addressing the security challenge, despite the fact that Northwest has consistently remained at the forefront of security challenges in the country. So we're hoping that as this government takes shape, we'll would see a different approach, um, incorporating, I would say, a hybrid of the kinetic components to our security um, approach, and then, of course, the non-kinetic component. Let, let, let me quickly uh, jump in here and look at uh, the new approach, uh, which you spoke about, the uh, you know, the peace building, early warning system. Uh, in, in all of this, uh, let's talk about the early warning system because it's very important. Because sometimes it looks as if uh, what the nation has always done is to react. And many say, uh, well, we should do pretty much more than this. Uh, the president spoke recently uh, after the EFCC and the DSS debacle where he spoke about collaboration amongst all agencies fighting crime and criminalities and even banditry. Speak to us more on early warning system and how it's going for Nigeria. So at the federal level, um, there are some components of that. Uh, there is, I think, one of the agencies under either the Ministry of Foreign Affairs or Ministry of Interior that has been handling uh, the implementation of our early warning system. Then, interestingly, at the, at the uh, sub-regional level, ECOWAS, there is a, a project um, for the implementation of early warning systems among all its me member states. Bottom line, what I'm trying to say is that there is a realization that implementing early warning systems and having a robust institutional ar arrangement for early warning systems is a very good way and approach to solving um, the kind of security challenges that are affecting um, the uh, West African sub-region, including Nigeria. Some state governments have even gone a step further. Uh, Plateau State as an example. Unfortunately, they are not, um, it, it, it's rather uncharacteristic for me to even use them as examples yeah. because of the security challenges they have. But point is, they have very good structures in place, on ground, that can be um, taken as models for replication across, across the other states. Kaduna State too has a functional and quite effective early warning systems, uh, you know, institutional arrangement in place that, like I said, can be implemented by the other states. Then you have other states that have the less formal ones like Katsina. Katsina has a very interesting one. But sadly, all of the states that I mentioned, if you notice, the security challenges in them is even yeah. higher than all the other states. So what is the missing link there? The only early warning systems are just that. They are early warning systems. Now, how do you incorporate that into the capacity or capability for response? That is, I think, what is even more important. Um, as, as let's say you're a traditional ruler in Brinungwari, and you know that 100 bikers, each of them armed with AK-47, is coming to attack your village. You know this because you've been able to gather the information, the indicators. What do you do? You inform, most likely, uh, either the commissioner or the special advisor on security, or if you have the contact details of one of the federal government agencies that are armed, you call them. What if they don't respond? There's really nothing you can do. So that is the challenge. The early warning systems are there in some of the states, but because of the constitutional lacuna that still places security within the exclusive list, we are not seeing the right type of response. Now, interestingly, uh, the new president visited the Office of the National Security Advisor and took time to go to Counterterrorism Center, which I'm told houses um, an intelligence fusion center. Now, all of these are elements that would improve the effectiveness and efficiency of our early warning system. Because if we have an intelligence fusion center where you are able to fuse intelligence from different organizations, and then more importantly, the element of response is embedded into that, that, that system. And then accountability, we, 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 we must speak about accountability. Because sometimes the challenge is not the absence of intelligence. The intelligence is there, but somebody fails to act on that intelligence. So there must be a system of accountability where we can check and where it is proven that 
an agency of government mm -hmm. uh, failed to act on the basis of an intelligence to save one life, then the leadership of that organization must be held responsible. Um, I know there has been discussion in the past of the need to make um, some aspects of security justiciable. Uh, perhaps in the 10th assembly, there is a need for them to pick up that element so that, yeah. again, where it's proven that the leadership right. of a particular security organization doesn't act, um, action is taken against that leadership. I'd like to thank you for your time. I really do hope that we'll have time to do this another time. Thank you, Kabiradamu. Thank you.